Thomas and Richard enjoyed each other's company. Thomas played no more tricks, and Richard always thanked him for fetching his coaches. All the while, they were biding their time, waiting for the perfect opportunity to play their trick on Gordon and James. During the autumn, Sir Topham Hatt's workmen carried out maintenance on the coaches in preparation for the busy holiday season. Seats were refurbished, buffers polished, and brakes were repaired. Thomas was very busy pushing the coaches where they were needed. I'm sorry, Richard, he sighed. I haven't had time to shut your train. Oh, well, that's all right, Richard smiled kindly. There's plenty of time. I'll tell you what, I'll help out too. Richard reversed into a siding where some old coaches sat. Oh, wait, Richard, cried Thomas. Stop! But before Richard could, he banged into the coaches. They flew down the siding and hit the buffers with an almighty clang. Oh, oh, Richard winced. Sorry. Count on Richard to have an accident with coaches, Gordon sniffed in the sheds that night. It wasn't Richard's fault, scowled Thomas. The brakes on those coaches are faulty. Besides, they didn't come off the rails. Quiet, little Thomas, James cut in. The big engines are talking now. Thomas seethed. Just be thankful, Gordon continued, you didn't send them careening down the main line. While I'm sure coaches moving on their own would be a sight for enthusiasts, it isn't proper. Richard was about to retort when Thomas spoke up. Oh, he smiled, so you know about the ghost trains too. Gordon stared. Whatever are you talking about? The ghost trains, Thomas replied ominously. Richard told me about them. They run empty and alone oh. through the darkness. Not a soul on board. Yep, that's true. They glide on the night wind. Whistles howling with no passengers to stop for. They disappear as fast as they arrive. As they arrive. Fading mournfully into the night. Do you expect me to believe that, Gordon spluttered? You've been spending too much time with Edward. What nonsense! <laughs> yes, nonsense, said James, trying not to sound scared. Think what you like, ended Thomas, but take my advice. Be on your guard. Be on your guard. The next morning, fog hung over the island. The engines had to take care, especially Gordon, who was about to leave with the express. Careful the ghost train doesn't get you, Thomas called cheekily. Ha! Ghosts indeed, sniffed Gordon. I have more important things to worry about. Richard was moving carefully through the yard. Just then, a coach glided past him and pulled alongside. Ghost train! cried Richard and bumped into the old coaches again. It's only me, called Thomas, just getting these ones in line. Uh, d didn't you see me? No, oh, you must have been hiding behind those wagons, Richard replied, still catching his breath. That's it, Richard. That's how we'll get those silly big engines. I'll wait behind the trucks again. And you whistle when Gordon or James is coming? Oh, we'll show them. Ghost trains, laughed Richard. But they never got the chance. Richard had to take the evening train, and Thomas was called away to help Toby, and the yard fell silent. It was getting late, and James returned to the big station with a slow goods train. Where's that Thomas? he grumbled. I want to go back to the shed. The station master walked up to him. Sorry, James, he sighed. Thomas went away to the branch line to help up there. You'll have to shunt these away for yourself. James was none too pleased. Come on, come on, come on, he fussed. Stop pushing, stop pushing, grumbled the trucks as James bumped them about the yard. James gave the trucks a shove down the line, thinking they'd head into the siding. He lost them in the fog so he didn't hear them bump into the old coaches. That had done it, the bump sent the coaches rolling away. 
After their run-ins with Richard, their breaks were all but useless. Through the darkness and the fog, Gordon was bringing his evening express back to the big station. The fog gave everything an eerie aura, and Gordon was unusually silent. His eyes darted all around, and he listened for strange sounds, hearing only his own wheels on the track. Then he heard a faint groaning sound. What was that? He jumped. The creaking grew louder, and soon Gordon could make out shapes moving in the fog. Closer and closer he came until... Oh, horrors! cried Gordon. A line of coaches went groaning past, with no engine pulling them and no passengers aboard. Gordon was frantic. It's the ghost train, he cried, picking up speed and tearing towards the big station. Nearer and nearer he came, approaching the platform. Whoa, boy, cried the driver, slamming on his brakes. Gordon screeched, the passengers shrieked, the station master blew his whistle and waved his flag, and Gordon stopped just in time. Everyone was very surprised and cross. Gordon? Gordon's eyes shot open. Oh no, please stay back. Oh, oh. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, lovely, lo lovely morning, isn't it? Uh, uh. No, Gordon, it isn't. Not when I've been dealing with passenger complaints all night. I hope you've got a good explanation for what's happened. W w well, s s sir, you see, I uh, was saw a, g a ghost train. Hmm. I beg your pardon, replied Sir Topham Hatt. It, 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 it was just like Thomas described. S sir, uh, c coaches with no engine p p pulling them, g gliding through the night. Just then a creaking noise echoed through the yard. They've come back for me. They've come back for me. Oh, please, someone help. Out of the morning fog appeared Thomas, pushing the old coaches. Richard, he said, these were at my junction this morning. Did you play the trick without me? Thomas, said Sir Topham Hatt, what have I told you about playing tricks? And now you've got Richard telling ghost stories and damaging rolling stock. No, no, sir, honest, stammered Richard. Well, except the ghost story part, that is true, sir. Whatever are you talking about? Surely you've heard of them, sir. They're trains that run during the night. No passengers to pick up or let off. Just empty coaches going through empty stations. I am aware of those, Richard, replied Sir Topham Hatt, but those aren't ghost trains. They're merely formalities. Trains running the bare minimum amount to keep branch lines from closing. A problem on the other railway, to be sure, but luckily nothing to worry about here. We reopen branch lines, remember, Duck and Oliver chimed. Oh, smiled Richard. Oh, well, that sounds much better than a ghost train. Uh, uh, but, but I'm afraid I don't know about bumping those coaches down the line, sir. I wasn't even in the yard after Thomas left. The only other engine would have been, um, well, James. James chuckled nervously. Oh, <laughs> oh sorry, sir. Isn't that just like James, Thomas chuckled to Richard, playing our trick before we had a chance to? Well, uh, it seems he went a bit too far with it, too, frowned Richard as he watched Gordon catch his breath. That's just like James, too, smiled Thomas. Later that day, the fog lifted completely and everything went back to normal. Thomas was allowed to go back to the branch line again. 
and while he was glad to be going home, he was sad he wouldn't get to see Richard as often. That's all right, smiled Richard. I promise I'll whistle every time I go through your junction. Well, I suppose I meant to do that anyways, but well, well, now you'll know it's me saying hello. <laughs> Besides, I'll be taking the express more often now. Why, quizzed Thomas. The reason was simple. As punishment for his recklessness, Sir Topham Hatch had put Gordon on Good's work. Meanwhile, James was relegated to shunting again until he could be trusted to be more careful. Both engines felt very sorry for themselves and vowed never to let ghost trains get the better of them again. Happy Halloween, everyone!